Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture, and right now we are joined by Greg Sikalik. He's with the Canola Council of Canada, based out of the Peace Country. Greg, how's it going today? Good afternoon, Sean. Awesome. Yourself? Uh, really good. Okay, Greg, news is kind of breaking here that the Peace Country has is going to have to deal with a disease that once we thought was unthinkable in terms of it showing up there. Well, I don't know if I'd say it was unthinkable. Um, I'm, I'm from the Peace originally, and I moved back in, in 2011, and basically at every uh, presentation I've given, I've uh, expressed my surprise at the fact that we haven't found it yet, owing to both the uh, you know the cropping frequency of canola in the piece and our soil conditions being you know wet early in the season, and the uh, you know the, the generally acidic pH that we have. Uh, so really, it's um, a, a pretty hospitable environment for club root, but uh, for a number of reasons um, that are unknown to me, we were unable to find it. So we had maybe started speculating a little bit that maybe the piece has, you know, pathogen suppressive soils. And this, this past week, we demonstrated that, no, the, uh, the piece is, is not unique. It is uh, very much like the rest of central Alberta. Uh, and we, we did, in fact, find club root in, uh, in a field in the southeast piece. Yeah, so the piece is well known for very, very tight canola rotations. Canola has been economically a very important crop for farmers there. What, you know, with finding this one case in a field, what does this mean possibly for crop rotations and club root stewardship going forward? Well, basically, uh, club root is one of those diseases that, um, that rotation won't affect your club root status until it's introduced. So the most important thing that we can really stress to growers in, a, in the, the surrounding municipalities and even the surrounding fields is to really prevent that introduction of um, you know, soil material from, from neighboring fields. Basically treat every field as though it had club root. So you want to confine soil to, the, to its originating fields, regardless of its club root status, um, and really make sure that soil is not moving from field to field. Uh, that, that's really how it's going to be introduced. It, it's not, it's not going to be you know, expanded by, by rotation. You just need to introduce it first. However, once it is introduced, we really need to stretch rotations out. Um, really the best management practice that we have is to let those, uh, those spores expire and subside, uh, and obviously you know, switch to resistant varieties. One of the messages that we've kind of together at council uh, in association with the, uh, the provinces is, is uh, once you're in uh, particularly, you know, a neighboring community to, to where club root has been discovered, you really want to start switching to club root variety, resistant varieties in a, in a hurry. We really want to prevent those massive spore buildups that we saw in central Alberta in, uh, you know, the early, uh, the early 2000s. Uh, those are the ones that, uh, that caused the, the massive yield loss and where we see the, the rise of the, the new pathotypes as well. Uh, should be a numbers game, right? If you increase your spore load uh, into the you know hundreds of millions per gram, uh, you're just going to have more likelihood of finding a resistant biotype in there. So we can keep those spore levels down by using resistant varieties sooner rather than later. Um, we can hopefully keep the uh, the disease to to a dull roar. But definitely once uh, uh, once once club root has been has been identified, we want to draw those uh, rotations out for club root and, and other diseases as well. Yeah, with the devastating impacts that club root can have on yield, this is definitely going to be a wake-up call for growers in the Peace Country reason, region now that we do have a case. Why do you think it's taken so long, Greg? I really don't know. I'm actually a bit of a loss to explain it. Um, you know, the amount of equipment that we had seen move back and forth from, uh, you know, the uh, infested region, as well as, you know, oil field activity, recreational activity from, from hunters. Uh, uh, but there's, 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 I really can't explain it. But um, but now we certainly have demonstrated that the piece is not immune and uh, growers really are going to have to uh, treat it a little bit more seriously. So, like I said, uh, right now we, we've, we've identified uh, one field uh, that, that, that's fairly heavily infested in, in the MD of uh, Big Lakes. So that's the, the most southeasterly uh, district of the most southeasterly uh, municipality in uh, what we consider the piece, I guess. Um, and a couple other fields that are infected uh, quite uh, quite minorly. So you know, growers in the uh, in, in the MD of Big Lakes for sure, and uh, and obviously stretching westward and northward are definitely going to want to uh, you know keep an eye on those rotations, uh, switch to resistant varieties, but also you know keep up the vigilance and scouting. Uh, I, hopefully, we can find fields before there's you know a massive blowout in in spore numbers. Uh, we can find maybe, you know, a few plants at the entrance and, you know, grass the entrance over to prevent soil from moving around or switch to resistant varieties sooner. There are a couple other treatments we can do that are, you know, fairly expensive on a field scale. But if we can refine it to a patch or two, like right at the, at the entrance where soil falls off of equipment from previous fields, um, we, can, we can do a little more to manage it in that case. Greg, thanks for providing the insight on this club root case that has been discovered in the Peace Country.
Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, one, one further note, we are going to be hosting a club route information session in uh, the MD of Big Lake. So we're just finalizing a location right now. That's going to be on August 31st, um, somewhere between Guy and High Prairie. Uh, it'll start over, uh, at 10 a.m. And, and go till about noon. And we're going to go over the municipality's code policies, uh, as well as a bunch of best management uh, tactics we can use to hopefully mitigate the spread of this, but definitely manage what we have found. Awesome. A great way to make sure the right information gets out there so people can enact the best management practice plan that works for them and also minimizes the spread of this disease. Greg, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Sean.